come in. What is going on, y'all? It is the caveman back at it again with another video. Ah, oh, good lord. I mean, I mean, I haven't wanted to talk about any of the losses that we've suffered this year, but each time we seem to lose, I seem to not want to talk about the game more and more because the losses just mount up and they just continue to get worse but i'm gonna try and make it as quick and painless as possible because let's be honest i think we all want to forget what in god's name happened on monday night football last night but either way you guys know the drill around here mott's applesauce if you're ever hungry thirsty whatever it might be mott's applesauce will satisfy whatever satisfying you need to satisfy you with the k my guarantee i promise it will never fail you can't say the same thing about a certain football team here now can we oh here goes nothing. The Buffalo Bills on primetime on Monday Night Football on their own home field lose 14 to 10 to their arch nemesis, the New England Patriots. Not even to Tom Brady. Not even to a veteran quarterback. A rookie quarterback who only threw three total passes in the game and only completed two for a total of 19 yards. Yes, we lost a game to a football team, to an offense. That only threw the ball three times in 2021. I think that's the most unheard of thing ever. This was a must-win game for so many different reasons. And like our season was already kind of starting to go up in smoke. And this was our opportunity to kind of extinguish those flames. But instead we just sat there and watched them burn. And now they're really starting to burn. And now the fire is starting to pick up. And now this is where the panic really starts to settle in for us. It is damn near impossible to point out one singular play or even one singular drive that turned this game on its head. I mean, there were just so many different opportunities that we were given and we just blew each and every single one of them. I haven't seen a team lose games because of themselves more than the Buffalo Bills here in 2021. We shoot ourselves in the foot on a week-to-week -week basis. We put together a miserable combination last night of extremely brutal coaching, poor execution, and a defense that couldn't stop a leaky faucet. And it added up to the result, the unpleasing result that we were met with on Monday Night Football. We did not deserve to win that game. Let's be honest here. We played horrendous. I'm really going to try and avoid getting into detail about this game because because we all watched all 60 minutes. We all saw each and every screw up that happened by the Buffalo Bills. So why do we have to rehash it? We all feel the same way about it. But I'm going to try and go over what I feel is important. And that is focusing on the bigger picture. My own personal opinion. The inconsistent, miserable, disappointing product that we have seen from the Buffalo Bills this season is just a result of a coaching staff and a front office that has not been prepared, that has not set this roster up for success, that has not adequately done their job this season. And that, that's just the harsh facts of it. I cannot continue to point to the players for not doing their job when at the end of the day, they're not the one that runs shit. The, the upper the upper management, the front office, the coaching staff, they're the ones that ultimately should be receiving most of the blame at this point in time. I have been resonating the same exact sentiment for as long as I can remember. Dating all the way back to the AFC Championship game, all the way up to the trade deadline this year, we had so many opportunities to fix the issues that we not only had last year, but any issues that might arise this year. But for one reason or another, Brandon Bean and his team decided that was not necessary. And now, lo and behold, we sit here in 2021 with issues that were not only an issue in 2020, but new issues that have arisen this year with quarterback depth, offensive line depth, defensive tackle depth. All of these different things could have been addressed at one point or another. But for some reason, they, they, they just weren't. But the thing is, I think it's been even worse for the coaching staff. I mean, the front office, I don't think it's done their job adequately. But the coaching staff, I could say the same exact thing. And I think it's been even worse. They just have not prepared this team on a week-to-week -week basis to the best of their ability to set this team up for success. And it's shown. I mean, it is shown. I mean, you would think we would show some flash of what we were like last year into this year. Considering we remained with the same roster, but... That has not been the case at all, not at a single point this year. John McDermott has been far from perfect. I mean, last year he was one of the best coaches when it came to coaching decisions such as going forward on fourth down, challenging a play when necessary. But this year, um, he's been horrid. I mean, that is not even a word to describe how bad Sean McDermott's decision-making has been this year. It has been absolutely brutal. The chart that you're seeing on screen right now basically just breaks down analytically when a team should go for it on fourth down and if that team goes for it on fourth down in the correct analytical situations. And unlike last year where Sean McDermott was pretty much the best at it, 
he is one of the worst at it this year. I don't know where this conservative mindset came from that has plummeted the statistic for him, but it's absolutely eaten us alive. Not to mention his timeout management. I mean, it has not been pretty either. What in God's name was the timeout management this week? I mean, it doesn't even stop at this week. It's definitely happened in prior weeks that I just can't remember right now. But we took a very useless timeout to uh, challenge that play when Mac Jones got that first down or didn't get that first down. But either way, it was clear and obvious that they were not going to overturn it. But Sean McDermott threw the challenge flag anyway, and there goes a second half timeout that we easily could have used. Then later down the line, we find ourselves in a situation where the offense is not ready, so Sean McDermott calls a second timeout that we could have easily used at the end of the game to get the offense ready for that given red zone play. And then what do we do the next play? We go out and get sacked anyway. I mean... Two timeouts, two timeouts that could have been extremely beneficial to the Bills at the end of the football game that were wasted, wasted because of stupid coaching decisions. Although on that note, I will say that I agreed with Sean McDermott's play call to kick the field goal on fourth and goal from New England's 15-yard line early in the fourth quarter. Even though it was against the wind, I thought our chances of Tyler Bass making that field goal were higher than us scoring a touchdown from the 15-yard line on fourth and goal. And I, I agreed with that decision, and Tyler Bass barely missed it. If he makes that field goal, which was very likely because he barely missed it, then I think we uh, have a different result at the end of the game there because we would have played the final drive slightly differently. I'm just going to go down the line of coaches here. As for Brian Dable, um, this game against the Patriots pretty much just encompasses how bad you've been all damn season. This entire year of 2021, I don't think you've had a single good game of play calling. I'm going to be honest. Granted, I understand that it's a little bit harder to game plan when you have an offensive line that can't pass block, no run block. But at the end of the day, you're supposed to be one of the best offensive coordinators in the NFL and even a head coaching candidate by the end of 2021 but you're doing yourself a major disservice by just completely failing to set up and put guys in positions to be successful each and every week just don't understand why every other game this year we have run QB power QB sweep QB draw with Josh Allen every single drive there's at least one QB run but in the game that we knew was going to be bad weather where we knew we were going to struggle to throw the ball where we knew we were going to have to establish a run game we decided to completely stray away from any quarterback runs, from any ball carrying by Josh. We just completely abandoned it. Why? I still don't know the answer. I think there was one design quarterback run in this entire game. I mean, Josh Allen should have been taking the snap like Lamar Jackson and following his offensive line and just sweeping up the sideline. I mean, this should have been a constant play call where Josh Allen was just catching the ball and running. But for some reason... That just wasn't a part of the game plan. Even though you knew what the weather was going to be like for a week and a half, you've had 10 days to make this game plan, and that's what you came up with? This was finally the week to break out every single Josh Allen run that you have in your playbook. And it was gone. I don't understand. Instead, what we decided to do this week was attempt to establish the run with Zach Moss. And every fresh set of downs, we wasted a play running Zach Moss up the middle, uh, to the left, to the right. Stretch plays, yeah, dive plays. Zach Moss had eight carries and averaged 2.6 yards per carry. But we continuously gave the ball to him every single time we saw ourselves with a fresh set of downs. And we wasted a play and put us behind the sticks. And the worst part was... Throwing the ball was actually working, and he just continuously ran the ball. Like we were actually being able, we, we were actually able to throw the ball because Josh Allen is a freak athlete. And even though the offensive line was crumbling in front of him and the wind was blowing the ball everywhere, he was still able to zip passes where they needed to be. And we just we just ran the ball. All I know is that we need to start questioning if Brian Dable is actually the man for this job. And I think Sean McDermott also kind of agreed with that because he was asked if Brian Dable did his job in this game. And this was his answer. Brian Dable, is he doing a good enough job to set this off the success? Well, I didn't think, honestly, we, we took advantage of opportunities tonight. I really didn't. I mean, the ball's at the 40-yard line. You know, we're one for four in the red zone. So uh, we got to figure that part of it out. I was shocked when I heard Sean McDermott say that. Although I thought Sean McDermott coached a brutal game himself, um, I was shocked to see him as upset as he was. I mean, I've never seen him that mad during a football game. Like, he was livid. He wasn't his usual, you know, positive self clapping up and down the sideline. He was walking up and down, yelling at the refs, yelling at the players. The dude was pissed. And in that post-game press conference, he kind of called out Brian Dable, and rightfully so. We've already seen two offensive coordinators get fired from the Giants and the Panthers because the offenses were not living up to the talent level that they had on their roster. And even though we're not bad teams like that, it's still kind of the same premise. We have an offense that has a tremendous amount of talent, yet they're struggling to put up points, especially in the red zone. I mean, you've got to point somewhere and something's got to change. I don't think he's going to get fired. I think we're going to stick with him. 
but it makes you think. And as for Leslie Frazier, I mean, I don't even know if I could blame this guy. I mean, I don't know if it was just a play calling issue, a defensive scheme issue, or if it was just the players lacking execution because, I mean, what do you even tell the players? Like, they're going to run the ball, just stop the run. I mean, I don't know what else Leslie Frazier could have told them or, or play called, but the, the guys just had to make the play. And for some reason, I understand they only gave up 14 points, and at the end of the day, the offense should have been able to put out more than 14 points to win the game, but you got gassed for over 200 yards by a team that threw three passes. Mac Jones threw three passes, completed two for 19 yards. The Patriots chewed so much more clock than they should have been able to. They gained way more yards than they should have been able to after the way they ran their offense. I mean, I just, I don't understand the concept of gaining yards when you know what the offense is going to do. I, I'm getting angry. I'm just getting flustered. I mean, I just don't understand how you don't blow up the run at least half the time when you know the run is coming. I don't get it. With Star, with Tremaine, I mean, that was the big excuse um, against the Colts. But now we had both those guys back. Like I said, whether it's on Leslie or just a lacking execution by the players, I, I really don't know. That's beyond my comprehension at this point in time. But either way, all I know is that our run defense, it sucks ass. Whether Star's in the lineup or not, we can't stop a leaky faucet. And I don't care if they only give up 14 points. They gave up 14 points too many to an offense that only threw three passes in the NFL in 2021. That's inexcusable, no matter how, uh, no matter what way you want to put it. Last thing I want to say in this video is that I actually thought Josh Allen played an unbelievable game, all right? I don't think I have to convince many people when I say that but I did see some people saying that Josh Allen didn't play as good as he could have and you know I could have agreed with that in previous weeks where we've lost or maybe we've had closer games than they should have because Josh Allen was making poor decisions and he was throwing bad interceptions but in this game specifically Josh Allen did every single thing in his power to give us a chance to win and he was just let down by the coaching staff by his supporting cast by his defense I mean he was just let down by everybody else around him I mean given the context of this game without blocking without a run game with wind that was pretty much throwing the ball in its own direction Josh Allen was making every play he could he was just getting let down I mean Dawson Knox had two big drops that I thought he could have had that would have changed multiple different drives not to mention he had took a, an awful false start and in a position right outside the red zone or right outside the end zone I should say that backed us up when we really did didn't need that um Dawson Knox returned to that form that I thought he would be this year he returned to the Dawson Knox that I never wanted to see again and I hope that's just a one week thing because that was everything that I was worried about heading into this year right in that game for Dawson Knox so hopefully that changes I mean, we started off four and one and now we're staring down the barrel of seven and six you can forget you can kiss goodbye the AFC first seed you can kiss goodbye top of the AFC East we just need to focus on getting into the damn playoffs at this point there's still time to turn things around I guess time will only tell those are my thoughts if you have any thoughts which I'm sure you do leave them down in the comment section below if you enjoyed the video as always please like subscribe all the fun stuff if you want to hit the bell to be notified when I upload I'd appreciate that you want to go to Twitter follow me over there I'd appreciate that as well I'm a part of the built in Buffalo content creation team if you enjoy Buffalo sports content be sure to follow and subscribe to us on any social media you might have and I hope to see you in the next one peace